I think it's so cute the way he chuckles that camera up under the cheek. <laughs> Just say, ready? Every time. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, that's sure. I thought he was Haven't trying to st that? stimulate it into working properly. Oh, no. They uh, they would never do that. This Work properly. Public that television. <laughs> we shouldn't be talking about stimulation. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mentioned it. Oh, so am I. I'm Labor Johnson. I know it's been so long since he has, but I didn't know what the word meant. Oh, and I'm Larry Bly. <laughs> Welcome to Cooking Jeep. Your hair is We're real going funny to today. the Congo today. Wait a minute. What? No, we're not. We're oh, going to talk about, about your hair. my hair. It looks like a baseball cap in front. <laughs> They're just kind of sticking up. Isn't it? Well, I yes. can't help it. I do the best I can. Nope. If it's not good enough, I'll find another show. <laughs> we're going the to the bad hair show. <laughs> We're going to the, the interior of Africa today. Oh, where yes. The, the Cook Sisters. And were. I have something appropriate for oh. that. Oh, you know no. me. I brought. I have gone all out this year on, on costumes for our programs. Wait till you see this. <laughs> this is uh, supposed to be an elephant. Uh, what do they? What do elephants have? A, a trunk. trunk. An elephant what do trunk. elephants have? That almost uh, is rather bizarre and a little well. Anyway. Well, and it shows your formal lack of, uh, of education, Bly, so because that is the trunk of an Indian elephant. Oh and we no! Don't had that tell last me I week. got the wrong one. <laughs> You can count the number of segments in it and tell. Later on, I'm going <laughs> to suck up water through it and blow it all over you. But anyway, it's so heavy, it kind of droops. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, it looks better than my regular nose, however, if you'll notice. But anyway, well, so much I for think the silly dumb noses. I think that's you painted it up gray and everything. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Old pachyderm beak. <laughs> what yeah, do you got? Well, I've got a letter from a couple of gals down in Richmond, Trudy and Debbie. We sure do get a lot of letters from Richmond. Okay. Richmond and Washington and Miami. They were so real they, big in those oh. three areas. The rest of the place, they could care less. And it says, Dear Laban and Larry, hi, guys. We hope y'all are fine and in good spirits. We are in trouble down here in Richmond. If we don't get some new programs, we're going to scream. We know you've, <laughs> we know y'all have changed in five years. The show we saw today was the fourth repeat of the same repeat uh -huh. <laughs> in two weeks. That's a bad problem. <laughs> that really is. Keep up the good works. By the way, Deb and I were miffed because Larry gave us his autograph and Laban didn't. They won't be happy. We won't be happy until we have both signatures and new shows. Love, Trudy and Debbie. That's because All right, of, when did you see Trudy and Debbie, Bly? That's because Laban charges for his. <laughs> I give mine for free. Uh -huh. yeah, well, when did you, you see uh, Trudy and Debbie? They wrote us and, you know, I wrote them back. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, aren't you, were you a good boy scout? Incapacitated. What, what, at the did, time what, what I, did you write to Trudy it was and a Debbie? Particularly rough party he had been to, uh, and I had uh, to work uh, for several <laughs> days answering letters. I want to know about Trudy and Debbie. I, I mean, don't know. Is I, there anything going on between you three? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have to show the folks that's out there. You know, we get lots of interesting stuff sent oh, to yeah, us. Oh. And this is probably one of the most interesting ones we have received uh -huh. in a long time. Now you got to see this up close to appreciate this. Watch the batteries. That looks be like the on. same little dork that we have doing the announcement. Well, it, it does kind of look like. Now watch uh -huh. this. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> and with a glowing hatchet. <laughs> that kind of looks a little like our manager, doesn't it? Uh -huh. <laughs> What he's eating. <laughs> no, he's we're cutting the budget. We're cutting the budget <laughs> on our show. <laughs> Enough of the silliness. I don't know. I just thought I ought to share that with people. <laughs> Somehow it just didn't seem right for me to keep this at home to myself. No, it, it certainly wasn't. Enough. Are you going to bring some of those other funny things that our chair has? Hmm? Especially that, uh, that donkey dispensing <laughs> cigarette dispenser. No, we couldn't show that one on the air. Well, we could. You know, we're getting a bad reputation. People are sending us stuff like that. I know. The and a lot of corruption that comes through the bail into this station. Terrible. My family is real upset. Yeah, I know they are. Let's go over and <laughs> they see. They disowned you years ago. <laughs> see what's happening in the Congo. I'm doing chicken Congo today. Oh, is that anything like those candy uh, fudge brownies Congos? I don't get it. Well, there is there is a kind of dessert called Congo. Would you do me a favor and turn sure. this up a little? Well, let me do myself a favor and turn it up. Well. It's just I fixed this stuff yesterday just to see how it would run, how it would go. And uh, it smells wonderful, but I'm trying to get this glomp of stuff all heated up <laughs> so it'll be warm when we want to taste oh, it yeah. later on this evening. Chicken Congo. I'm heating up over here about a cup of vegetable oil. I got that real hot, and you want to get it real hot for a reason, because we're going to 
prepare some chicken and throw it in there. If I were to stick my hands down in there, that'd just bubble up. It's fiery hot, <laughs> like the pits of hell, right? <laughs> well, anyway, I don't know why you keep mentioning the pits of hell. I, well, I've never been know. there, but it's... I heard you were going for a homecoming. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm not prepared for the program. I forgot something. I, I certainly hope you're not going to put flour on that chicken before you do it. Yeah, why? You're not supposed to. You're not? No. Does it call flour? No, it doesn't say anything about it. Well, it just you're not says... supposed to put flour in it. They don't have flour, milled flour in, in the Congo. Oh. Well, it says fried <laughs> chicken until golden brown. How can you get a golden brown that doesn't have anything on the outside well, of it? Well, try Just the skin? Uh-huh. Well, Laban, if you would uh, write these things in the recipe, it would uh, well, be kind of nice. Well, I think it says that right in the recipe. It doesn't say anything about flour. Well, that doesn't mean anything necessarily. <laughs> there was a recipe last week that didn't say anything about a couple of other things that were supposed to be in there. But anyway, now that we're off to a grand start, <laughs> we will take this stuff. This is a whole cut up chicken. Oh, it was mashed flat. They don't have these in the Congo either, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to use it that way. If you think I'm going to go out and chase a chicken through the woods, you're wrong. Woo! Well, I'll tell you one thing, it certainly does cut down on preparation time. Ah. That thing is really hot. It is. I'm going to put it off it a little bit before we burn everything bit. down here. Excuse me, I have to do a little sawing at this point. This is the part I hate. I hate wrestling with chickens. Although some of my most fun times back on the farm. Oh, there we go. That was a big piece that needed to be made smaller. Well, I'll say this much, it certainly cuts down on the prep. That's it for the first part. Now, a mashed chicken. All right, now, this beef that I've got going here, you're gonna think it's gonna burn in just no time at all, but it isn't. You just have to keep moving it around the pan, and I'm using stew beef for this, and uh, look what you get in there. Sometimes you get a piece that has got mostly fat, and because of my heart problems, I'm oh God, do we have to hear about that? Sure, I'm de-fatting it, and just put a little bit of the. Uh, <coughs> try to keep as much of this fat off of it as you can. Keep your fat off it. Yeah. And. Uh, I still think that in the Congo they could probably stir up a little flour somewhere if they wanted to. If they could stir up this Holly Farms chicken, they could do anything they wanted to. All right, now, as you get the chicken, and I'm going to put in just a little bit of oil here, or a little uh, whatever of our margarine, I'm trying to keep down on the oil. I'm just slide a little bit of that right down into there. About a tablespoonful. I'm going to, this is all the nasty parts that we don't need. I need about two tablespoons of parsley chopped. Now, in this recipe, I already have one large onion coarsely chopped. And it's all ready. And then I'm going to salt it briefly, just a little bit of salt. I wonder if they have uh, Kroger's pepper. black pepper uh, in the Congo. No, uh, they have uh, real the real stuff, the real McCoy. <laughs> but then that's another TV show altogether. We won't get into yes. that. Yes. in the bar with the people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's an old routine we used to. <laughs> I'm trying to gather up some of the uh, the grease, the that's grease, flat. which uh, the grease is the word. It'd be a great name for a TV show or a, a off-Broadway production, don't you think? Mm -hmm. grease, grease is the word. Is the word. Now, here we go with this parsley, coarsely chopped in here, and you want this meat to get good and brown. Don't worry about the little burned pieces of onion and stuff like that, because that will just color and it won't taste is in this the particular parsley, dish. Parsley? Yes. And uh, there you go. 
All right, now at this point in this particular recipe, after you've got this meat good and brown like this with the parsley and salt and pepper and the one onion added, and that's about two pounds of stew beef, you then add water to cover. Water to cover. All right, so I'll do that. Blair? We'll water to cover, was that, uh -huh. uh, Lady? Now, we're going to chop up an onion, which is something that we spend probably most of our time on this program doing. Now back to Laban. Thanks. In a little while, after we get the, uh, this meat has got to cook for about an hour and a half to two hours till it gets real, real tender, fork tender. Then you're going to take some potatoes and quarter them and put them on top of the stew. You don't want to stir it down in. You want to rest it on there. And you'll find that by judiciously stirring this every once in a while. Judiciously? And judiciously Ooh, stirring it. $50 word, and, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Occasionally uh, taking the top off to vent it, uh, you'll find that the broth will cook down to a delicious gravy. <laughs> Oh, they're making those signs at us again. Where they're is, signified to us. Where is your uh, garlic, your wreath of garlic, Bly? That's no, that's the, a wreath of Franklin. <laughs> oh, a wreath of garlic. <laughs> oh, okay. I remember that's a wreath of sister. Uh, the one that can't sing so good. All right. What? All right. Now, back to you chopping the onion. Well, that I'm still so chopping good. the onion. Laban? <laughs> Larry? <laughs> One can only pass this back and forth so uh, many times yes. between two people. Oh, I don't know. Why don't you talk about my hair for a while while well, I finish no, doing this? No, no, it's not. Oh, uh, he well, I don't be, want. I don't want to say it's not worth talking about not, because I don't want to hurt his feelings. Sure but nevertheless, beneath him to belittle himself. Doing why? That, why, do, why are your tomatoes different colors? That's something to talk about. They came in at different times. Because two of them are orangey red and one is Do you want to know the truth? Pinky you want red. To, I swore I'm sick of looking at this watch. It's a nice watch. It's an expensive You're not watch. You're cook it, are you? But kiss it goodbye because <laughs> I'm tired of looking at it on television. That's all I saw last week. Was your watch? It was my watch. Mm -mm -mm. They're probably, it was a good watch. <laughs> they're probably different varieties of tomatoes. Where did you get that nut chopper? Every time I bring this nut chopper on, Johnson swears it's his. Because I have one just it like it. It isn't his because we discovered the last time, boys and girls, that there are some tines missing down <laughs> in here. And Johnson's is, uh, is, is his fully tined. Fully tined. <laughs> <laughs> He's having the time of his life. Okay, what am I supposed to do now? One small red pepper chop. This is a large one, so I'm, I'm just going to use about half of it. Well, well good. Well, I'm not going to throw that away. I could use that later on. And it's pretty clean inside, just a uh -huh. few little seeds. I like to feed Johnson as many seeds as I can. You know, he has that diverticulitis problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was it I was say, saying I about know. you before we I went on there? Something about us. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm going to chop that up. Now back to Laban. Well, at least I don't have to wear a truss for it. <laughs> <laughs> back to Laban. And I, oh, what is that? Oh, that's a piece of the interior <laughs> part of an onion. <laughs> now, once you've added your potatoes and they are tender, if you'll look over in this pot and these potatoes are tender, you then add a tomato quartered or sixth or aided, depending on, on, well, cut into, oh, well, Lord, it is turning yellow. Uh, your chicken, that is. I believe it's your jaundice. Tomato. <laughs> Your tomato lays down on top of everything and steams and cooks in the liquid. That's the way the tomato lays. Now, Larry, you're serving yours uh, the modern African style on a plate, and I'm serving mine the style that they, they would use out in the bush. So we'll be uh, comparing those two things, and I can hardly wait to see you. Uh, oh, sloshed right down on me. You, you, what? I was. What was your thought it, that you were going to complete? No, 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 I was so surprised when this piece of meat just shot over and onto my hand and nearly ruined me with a third degree burn here. Last week we had a champagne cork go off while we were <laughs> down here. Put out that camera, guys. Good eye. Uh, the only one I had. Good eye, good eye. Good eye, good eye. <laughs> right. Big nose, big nose. Well, anyway. <laughs> 
maybe some of you know that joke, but we can't tell it here on the air. Oh, we're having such a good time. Well, it appears- If you're having a good time, right. <laughs> it appears to me, Lair, that your chicken is turning golden. Can you get all of the other ingredients in that pot? Well, let me tell you what. I have a frying pan at home that's about three times that size, and it's really what you need for a full whole chicken. One that they have, you know, left all the bones in and and it you just rip apart and throw in there. Or a Dutch oven. So or I'm just doing this just uh, for the studio audience's sake yeah. uh, so that they can see the recipe done. Now we take an onion and throw it in there on top of this. Now this is fried for a little bit, okay? Onion, some of that red pepper, throw that just in on top, a little salt and pepper. And I have to take three red ripe tomatoes chopped. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna chop some tomatoes, put them in there, and then we're gonna cut it down and we're gonna cover it up for one hour. It's gonna cook in there, lower the heat, and we're gonna cook it for 10 minutes. No, for an hour. <laughs> so there we go from there. They confuse me here uh -huh. with all these signals. Well, at least they give them to us. Remember back in the old days when they wouldn't? They would throw things down on the floor, and if, if the dice rolled a seven, you knew that's how many minutes you had left. Ah, but we've gotten uptown with this show, and boy, this, all of this really smells good, Dr. Bly. It really does. This beef is really, it's look, quite I, I don't aromatic. Know whether, whether you can tell or not, uh, maybe Miss Carol can get a great shot of this, but this, look, look at how lovely this, uh, this is nothing but just the beef, oh, a the onion, overhead shot. Look the at beef, that. the onion, and the parsley. And look what a wonderful, deep, rich brown you have. And that comes from really doing your work with the. Uh, now, if your TV is sauce. out of, uh, uh, if your TV is out of sync, it will come across purple. It's that, a lovely purple for those of you with a real bad zenith. What? Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'm still chopping up well, these tomatoes. Well, you certainly are. They we ought to, while well, I'm doing this tedious part of it. Why don't we look, why don't at, we the, look uh, at the recipes? And see what they have to say. See what the recipes, recipes have to say. Have to. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 stretch, stretch. See what, okay. wonder what the recipes are going to say today, <laughs> boys and girls. Oh, there we go. That's the chicken Congo. <laughs> if you can read, you got it. One cup of oil, that's what you fry it in, a fryer cut up, and you, I, I think that if you wanted to get fancy, you could use, uh, you know, maybe just a little flour, but you don't have to, okay? Half a cup of chopped onion, teaspoon of salt, red pepper chopped, two red ripe tomatoes. That should be three. No, it is two red ripe tomatoes. <laughs> Good, I only have to <laughs> chop this one and that's it. I was gonna throw three of them in there. Two cups of water, sometimes a good thing, I look at these. I gotta throw the water in. And a cup of chopped peanuts, and you hold those for the last 10 minutes. Well, I mean, you don't have to hold them. What was that, old, hold, joke? What hold was that old joke? Skip, uh, <laughs> take it two days running uh, and skip one day. Uh, Remember that joke? Yes. Okay, go ahead. And that's Chicken Congo. And now for the tajine, you need two pounds of beef, two pounds of potatoes, a large onion, uh, a large tomato, two tablespoons of parsley, yeah. and you could use some margarine or oil if your meat is really lean and some salt and pepper. And when that's your the meat is lean and you're feeling real blue. easy to do, nothing to it. It is utterly amazing. And you don't know this what to do. This actually is an easy dish. Okay, that's it. Boys okay, now I've got to add these two red ripe chopped tomatoes. You're gonna throw those in there. And a little bit of salt and pepper. Now comes the excitement. Oh Lord, you need two stand cups of back water. everybody. Oh, well that wasn't as bad as oh, I thought that it was gonna bad. be. I need just a little bit more. Okay. Two cups of Wawa, a little salt and pepper. Zin, 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 zin. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> She's getting real good. She drops. She's right feisty. <laughs> I'll let Let's, you read right, it. Being that you enjoy reading oh, so look. much. It's blue, the color of the Grecian flag. They must be there by now. Where is she? All right. <laughs> All right. Oh, but oh here excuse we... me, I gotta, you got to cover that and, oh. and cook it for an hour. <laughs> and then when you do that, we'll put uh, some peanuts right. on top of it and serve it. Okay, go ahead. All right. Come on. Here we are in Athens. Hope we don't get hijacked again. These Greek men are a mess. Sister went out with a taxi driver last night, and I'm learning to dance like Zorba. 
Have you ever tried ouzo? They won't serve that at the church picnic. <laughs> Have you ever had ouzo? Uzo. It's so powerful, it burns the vocal cords out of your mouth. It's well, terrible. Oh, Here sound. are the recipes for two things they might serve, though. Love Tootsie. And she is enclosed in here two recipes for Greek food. So we'll be having that next week. You're doing, a, I think I'll... What is that? Uh, a Greek chicken dish. What is that? Uh, and I've got a salad here. Cheese that they fry. Feta. Feta cheese. Feta cheese. Yeah. Gosh, that's And Retsina wine, the world's nastiest wine, flavored with pine tar. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've had some of that stuff. Uh, oh, it is. Well, it's now, I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but it is not for my particular taste no, buds. No, no. Well, Larry, did, did we have some of that down in Richmond that time we yes, went to that we fancy did. Greek we restaurant? I want to get my dish out here onto the... Well, it uh, looks like you have several <laughs> hats. Uh, there and this is the way we're going to put serve the food. So I'm just going to. This is the way we drop serve it right the food. On here serve the food. Like this. Well, how do you eat it? With your fingers. Hot potatoes with your fingers. Oh yeah. Well, it'll cool off a little bit, but you know that's what you do. And uh, so it's all ready here with our tomatoes and everything. And I don't get it. <laughs> and uh, I'll show you. We'll have a. I, this is one of those rare occasions where I believe it'd be right rude to serve the food real hot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless you're trying to evade the FBI and don't want any fingerprints for the next two weeks. Well, well this stuff, we'll take a good look at it, take a gander at it, is uh, not as pretty as it was yesterday because it's been carried around in my car all day. <laughs> It'll probably kill us. No, it is. It's fully cooked. It's just like that punch you made. It's fully cooked. It's very, very nice. Oh, that stuff kill anybody. That you, you carry see, around in your lovely. car for six weeks while it, while it ferments. And so there it is. And so what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Ain't nothing except, you can do except eat it. Eat on it. That's right. Eat on it. Now, here's what you do. When you get down to the last ten minutes on this, what you do is you sprinkle on some chopped nuts. Peanuts. Just a few will do. <laughs> Some chopped nuts. About a, how much? A About cup. Uh, a cup, as a matter of fact. Uh -huh. And you can cover that back up if you want to and cook it for 10 more minutes. In fact, that's what your, right. the recipe, uh, the uh, people who wrote this uh, says that's what you should do. Right. And I have no doubt that that's what you should do. You're going to put your watch back on yeah, so I'm putting my watch back on is. so I can tell what time it is. I've got to be somewhere in about okay. 10 minutes. All right. Anyway. Well, let's, uh, let's carry these fine dishes over here to the uh, right. dining room table. And uh, it is sort of bizarre carrying this uh, dish over here and knowing that I'm not going to be uh, using silverware with this. He won't be using silverware. I will be using silverware. Okay. There we go. The unfortunate thing is I have done such a good job of covering the food with nuts that I can no longer distinguish where one chicken piece begins and <laughs> another one ends. Well, isn't that nutty? So how <laughs> one can get this mess out of here is beyond my... I think I'll give you a big bony piece. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, there's... there you are. Well, I believe I gave you the back or something. Here, take <laughs> something decent here. Yow! <laughs> So does this chicken. Okay. <laughs> the camera persons are talking about using a verb concerning what their headsets do. <laughs> I know what they're talking about. And so does this chicken. Anyway, isn't this awful? We just had this cleaned. <laughs> this tablecloth is a wreck. Now, what am I supposed to do here? I'm supposed to... Well, one tears off a piece of bread. No, 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 no. You, you take all the fun out of it when you do it. Oh, I'm sorry. You tear off this a piece of bread. This is fun? Sure. Mm. You go for a little piece of meat, then you break off a piece of potato. You can have a little piece of, of tomato on it. I'm gala. And you drop it down in, into the broth. Do what? Mmm. Piece of tomato. Mm-hmm. And the bread. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> How attractive. Boy, it was real hot. That's all I Boy, they'd run you out of the jungle in no time. Good. 
Mm -mm -mm. This really is good this way, and this is the way you're supposed to do it. Lair, well, let's try the chicken. Let's see what mm. that's like. If we can figure out which end is up. <laughs> I can't get anything in my mouth today. Well, it tastes real good. It tastes like chicken Congo style. That's about all the time we have for today. Bye. If you're a fan of Cookin' Cheap and would like copies of the recipes, make a $60 pledge of support to Blue Ridge PBS, and we'll say thank you with the new Cookin' Cheap cookbook. This hardcover three-ring binder is chocked full of over 930 recipes that were presented on the show by Laban and Larry. In addition, you'll also receive instructions on how to download a digital copy of the cookbook to use on your favorite device. Pledge for your cookbook now at BlueRidgePBS.org or by calling 866-624-8366. Thank you.